Hello and welcome to the very first Bangkok Chit Chat with Andrew and Andy. I'm Andy and this is uh, Andrew. <laughs> Must be really. <laughs> so welcome along and uh, thanks for, for taking the time out to, to view the show. Well, what are we? We've been, what, a year getting this together, I guess, from the early concept days? Uh, a, year, a year of discussing on, a, on the back of a fag packet in, <laughs> in, a, in a pub. Yeah? I, I think so. Uh, there was a few pub sessions where I sort of said to Andrew, this is what I fancy doing. And I didn't know he was building a studio and building up his business. and. And he, well, what did you say when I sort of told you this is what I'd like to do? That well, was actually fulfilling a dream for me as well. So uh, but the, we'd, we'd known each other for, oh, well, not far, but we'd, we'd met for each other uh, probably 20 years ago. Yeah, paths have crossed. Yeah, I can't remember. And the, ra that. the radio, yeah. radio station. Uh, yeah. They advertised the Business in Thailand magazine. Oh, back uh, in the day. So, yeah, that's where we met. And then we contacted and saw each other through different events and things. But when we were discussing at the pub, that was just a, uh, an idea that, we thought, well, let's give it a go. Yeah, because I, I do watch uh, a lot of YouTube stuff, like uh, especially on football side of things and, and cars, which uh, I, I like. Uh, I'm interested in that sort of thing. So I just thought one day, well, why can't we do that? You know, and just talk about Bangkok, whether you live here or live abroad. Hopefully, it's going to be interesting. Well, the whole concept is uh, is basically it's entertainment. Uh, so it's, it's chit chat. It's a uh, a bit like pub talk, but we're going to have business interviews and we'll have a, just entertainment interviews. More more entertainment probably, than business. You'll probably recognise some of the people that, uh, that, that uh, we're, we're interviewing. But well, yes. it's, it's there to be informative as, as well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, later on in the show, we've got an interview with somebody you probably do know, a lot of you will, so uh, we'll, we'll tell you who he is later on. Okay, New Year. Well, we, it's now, of course, New Year is a thing of the past. We're well into 2019. But did oh, you have a good well into, but I mean, uh, well, okay. <laughs> well, we are. I mean, it's not. Everyone's back to work. Yeah, uh, I think one of the things you see is you know people say you know after the first in the UK, for example, people go back probably the, the third. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but over here, because people are traveling maybe back home mm. in some cases, mm. really they're talking about maybe the the, the beginning of the following week. Which yeah. I think was the seventh and the Monday, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then and that's when my son went back to work. He works for a Thai company, actually, but it's yeah. small, and he had the whole week off. And then I think it was the seventh, yeah. Yeah, but people, like, everything has got all these emails uh, and uh, you know, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, which yeah. is lo lovely to get. Uh, we discussed this in a in a, in a, in a promo video about uh, Christmas cards and uh, what people do you use now. But yeah. uh, I think. People are just now getting back into uh, on the, the, the second week of, of January into the swing of things. We have the business. This is when all the companies have their meetings now, don't they? Yeah, you know a lot of companies have, have, their, have their weekends away and things yeah. like that as well. From now up to maybe March, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the corporate, the, the, yeah. the dinners, the getting awards their, ceremonies, and, and, and getting like their that. employees into line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then of course they're all the ones that came back. Got a decent bonus. Uh, well, I, well, there's, there's an interesting topic, bonuses, because back in the day they were very regular. I mean, I my my wife works for for a big airline, uh, Thai International. She hasn't had a bonus for about five six years. Well, the banks used to pay up to six month bonus, and then when the crash came, yeah, it all dras drastically reduced. Yeah. And why why did they do that? Because basically they were limiting the risk. Mm. But there is a, something within labour law which says that if it's a continual. Uh, a process of always giving, let's say, one month, one month. It becomes a legal commitment. But I, it's, it's like tipping in America, though. I think a bonus, people are forgetting what a bonus is. Bonus is, if the company's doing well, and you've worked well, then here's a tip. It's a bonus. Hmm. It's not a mandatory, is that the word? It's yeah. not, you know, if a company isn't making money, then don't expect a bonus. Uh, why should you have one? I mean, it may not be your fault that the company isn't doing well. Well, that's the way some, you know, the, some of the staff look at it. I mean, yeah, but you should, you know, it's the over, and then again, you've got the businesses that do do well, but pretend that they're not, and they don't give you a bonus, mm. which is wrong. But anyway, did you have a good New Year? I had a great New Year. What time did you go to bed? Oh, it must have been about 2.33. 9.30. 9.30. Nice. <laughs> In the evening. <laughs> Why didn't you bring in the new, the bit, see, oh, being Scottish. Yeah. Uh, Hogmanay, right? Well, it's Hogmanay Hog for us, but for for, being, for the Scot, it is probably more important, but in a different way. It's big, Christmas. isn't it? It's big time. Because it wasn't it? until the 70s that Scotland actually made Christmas an annual holiday. 
New Year was always uh, an annual holiday in Scotland, but in the seventies uh, they they opened up Christmas as being a, a national holiday. Oh, oh, so, really? So you used to go to work on Christmas Day? Well, not in the seventies because I was too young. But uh, no, people. Did. I still had my paper run. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> bit like Thailand. I mean, it's a full working day here, isn't it? Yeah, and to be honest, I, 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 I worked in most of Christmas Day. Uh, I, I, we actually had a, a barbecue on the twenty third uh, mm. with. Uh, our, some our, my, my girlfriend's friends and a mm. couple of mine. Uh, it was nothing big, quite quite small. Yeah? Mm. But uh, it's now going to become an annual affair. Yeah, mm. and uh, that was really our celebration with some with some friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then on Christmas Day, uh, I don't think we really did an awful lot, mm. but the. That we had some some uh, some nephews and things like coming around. Well, not everybody had a good uh, New Year. I feel sorry a bit for the uh, tourists that were stuck on the islands because uh, uh, twelve days ago or so, thirteen days ago, a big storm uh, storm Pabuk. Is that how you pronounce it, Jet? Pabuk, Pabuk, uh, which you know hit Golsamawi, Gotau, Golpanga, eastern coast of Nakhon Sea Tamarat. They say fifty thousand people. I say evacuated. I think that's. A slight exaggeration, but they left. Well, they, moved, they were moved into uh, schools, I believe. Uh, so I didn't people know right on the coast, right on the yeah. coast, they were moved into schools for, for safety. Well, Jet, our um, producer and engineer here, you were delayed, weren't you? You can talk, don't worry, you can say yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You were delayed, you weren't using it as an excuse to come back late. Because <laughs> <laughs> he did come back late, didn't he? No. Oh, we didn't. No, no, no. Was, oh, yeah, right. all, all, all on time. But it affected your holiday? Yes. Oh, right. Well, sorry about that. Really am. What else happened? Now, this is interesting. Well, it's not that interesting, but I'm going to say it. Thai and foreign tourists fled for their lives. Typical. This is from the Bangkok Post and Nation. As a fire broke out on a pleasure cruiser in Bangkok's Chao Priya River last night. It says last night because it's a bit old now. Have you ever been on one of these dinner cruises? Uh, yes, but I think the, the, the bigger bigger picture of this is it's just not good for the, the Thai tourism because you've just had the accident in Phuket, mm. which basically tourism figures dropped. Yeah. yeah. So what we have to really look at is, it, is there proper checks being done? Well, the, the, the vertical cruise had left Asia Teak uh, when a kitchen worker, a kitchen worker noticed some smoke. Not in the kitchen, no, in the engine room. Oh really? Yeah, so it sails off down uh, and docks and everyone gets off, it's okay. But I've been, I... It's bad press, unfortunately. Yeah, my wife won a couple of tickets to go on one of them and it had it was like a buffet. It was dreadful, it was horrible. The buffet was a typical, you know, dishes of food with a little burner underneath and that. And you go to where they all go, turn, you go to, I think, uh, what I run, I think mm. some of that, and then turn around and come back. But I do recommend one, and when I have family coming over, we make it a point of always going on it because it's called Yok Yor. It's by a Yok Yor restaurant, and uh, they serve you the food while it's while it's docked, but you it goes underway when you're still eating the food, and there's a limited menu that they cook actually on board. Right. So you know, because it's a two and a half hour, three hour trip, it gets a bit not boring but you know you need some beers or mm. soft drinks or whatever and just food snacks keep coming you know mm. some whatever so yok your uh, their website is um, all the w's yok your which is y o k y o r dot co dot th forward slash english if you want it in there it's cheap uh, <laughs> you you pay a, i think 200 baht for the boat and then it's just like a Thai, because they have a restaurant anyway that you can right. sit at. So it's just like sitting in a Thai restaurant and paying the food you never heard price of it. Cheap. Yep. Yeah, and then you get on there and it goes all the, yeah, and the boat is a big thing. And you can sit on the top deck if the weather's good. Mm. And most times we do, and it's right at the top, and it's lovely. And once it was raining and they moved us to sort of like a cabin area at the, uh, and it was really enjoyable as well, though it's better to be outside. It's so cheap because I looked at it, it was around about 2,800, 300 baht for uh, buys, but it was one of the junk boats, yeah. Oh no, the, the, uh, yeah, like a rice barge thing? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some of the hotels have renovated those, uh, yeah. the ma what used to be called the Marriott. I think they're called, think they're called junk. The menorah, correct, the, the menorah, menorah. That rings a bell, the menorah. Anyway, yeah, now this is like a massive boat. And I mean, it, it just glides along the river. You don't have to worry about seasickness or anything. Anyway, that was my recommendation. I thought worth mentioning. 
Uh, so their holiday was not, <laughs> didn't go quite according to plan. Yes, yeah, that's uh, all I'm saying. So Kusamui as well. Yeah, yeah. No, no Mr. Flates. Somebody living in a housing estate, uh, <laughs> a, a suspected burglar preying on a Chambury housing estate stole nothing because he was disturbed. He probably disturbed anyway for doing it in the first place. But, but he left a souvenir for one woman at a block of flats, a poo that she had to clear up herself. Uh, she scared him off and called the police, but before he ran off, he did his dreaded deed. He probably shot himself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, why do they do well, that? I've read that before somewhere, but they, I think they're, they're just so pissed off that they couldn't get what they wanted. Well, well I'm going to... Yeah, what goes through their mind? We used to have that back in the uh, UK. People would break in and, and they, would, they would trash a place. And it was teenagers. And then pee all doing. over it or something. Yeah, yeah I know. It was, it was but you know, one thing it's to be definitely aware of is that on these holidays, yeah, and I'm sure everybody is aware of this, uh, is is the prime time for break-ins because they know that people are going to be out. Well, like, so this is yeah, security yeah. in England for football. And, houses yeah. are when when say someone's playing away, the like Manchester United are playing away, <laughs> they go to the strikers or one of the team players' houses and burgles it because they know Stephen Gerrard got done for that, right? And uh, Wayne Rooney got done. They knew he was away, and they burgle his house. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous time in these, in these, in these holidays. Yeah. So yeah. basically, security lights, what we've got is all security lights, so if they come in the vicinity in the yeah. path, the, the lights go on, it'll scare them off. It's all to do with deterrent. Yeah. Well, this is Bangkok Chit Chat, and we would love you to subscribe, because, well, first of all, it's the first one, early stages, and we need 100 to list ourselves on YouTube. So that's our first goal, really. It's, I think it's fairly achievable. Oh, well, it, it, it will be done. Yeah, yeah, cool. for, for, no, there's, there's, there's not an issue uh, with that. So yeah. please hit that subscribe button and like it. And if you can share it, especially at this stage, it would just help us get off and running because this is our passion. This is what we want to do. And we'll keep on doing it. But yeah, it just puts a nice little color on it. If you know you're sort of not very popular, but some people like what you're doing, then it makes makes it just a little bit nicer to do. Yeah, and we'll be releasing uh, new sh new shows every two weeks. Uh, so if you subscribe, you'll get notification of it. And there'll be other topics that we're actually discussing within the chit chat, no, not just the, the the interviews and business uh, and, and what's on, mm -hmm. but other topics we'll be discussing, which we'd encourage you to actually message through and uh, engage with this because this is more of a, a community. Event yeah, if you want to write else. to us, how can they do that? Because we're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. Yeah, so how can Facebook people get in Messenger. touch with you and me? Facebook Messenger is probably the, the easiest. Yeah. Is that going to come up after the video? Yes, we'll, we'll give you all the, at the end of the video you'll have a, a, a list of all the communication points. Okay. So, uh, and what's the, what's the, we'll, we'll remind you of what to do and how to do it mm -hmm. uh, at the end of each, each show, yeah. so, so you're aware. But yeah, give your ideas, if there's any yeah. particular topics you would like to be, dis uh, like to discuss. We will go out on yeah. location a few times sometimes as well, if it's yeah. the right yeah. thing to Just do. Pl please let us know. Yeah. Right, uh, we're taking a short break and we're back with uh, What's On on Bangkok Chit Chat. You're back with Bangkok Chit Chat with Andrew and Andy and uh, what's on? Well, I've only got a couple here and they may not appeal to everybody. Uh, Three-time Grammy Award winning multi-platinum band. Sounds good, doesn't it? Been here two times already. Maroon 5. Mm. <laughs> anyway, they're here on their red pill. That just shows your age. <laughs> no, I used to play them regularly on radio. I actually like them. I can't. Yeah. I like their song. Uh, moves like Jagger, da da da, da Jagger. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you don't know that one, do you? No, I do know it. Do, do you? I just sing didn't recognise you singing it. it, that's all. Oh, are you singing it? No, 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 I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even attempt it. Well, their show's on the 9th of March uh, at Impact Challenger Hall, Mung Tong Tani, price of tickets. Uh, start at 3,000 baht. Uh, well, compared to, uh, I used to think. Sorry, I used to. Uh, I went to a couple of concerts, but you compare it back to the UK. You had to know about hundred quid. What concerts were they? Were they? Um, well, like, I went um, to see Frank Sinatra. Sting. Sting. No, no. I mean, see this. This really just dictates <laughs> your age. But uh, no, I went to see Sting. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Right. Uh, so uh, that was that was probably around about. But you can't be more, yeah. Da, 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 da. 
in the fields of early. <laughs> yeah, well, he actually, you can actually Exist. understand the words when he sang it. I don't know, but uh, I okay. hope it's on lyrics <laughs> on songs. I was going, uh, I go, you know, over the bridge, na 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 na. <laughs> so, Ed Sheeran, Divide World Tour coming 28th of April. Now, hang on, these tickets, it may have sold out already because we've done this a sort of couple of weeks uh, b uh, prior to uh, the showing of the of the show. So, anyway, he's coming. Tickets are now. How, look at that. Tickets start at two thousand baht, but they probably go way up to six thousand. Yeah, but there's only thousand. one of Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I, I'm not an Ed Sheeran fan. I have to admit, my my wife is. My, I don't know anyone that isn't. I'm not sure. I'd probably take a cushion with me. I might fall asleep when I'm watching it. Well, I know. But he's, he is a very, he's a fantastic a artist. guy, of course. Yeah. Of course. Anyway, and he's a redhead. So the, this is all the fashion now, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? It is. Yeah. All the redheads. We what natural Harry, or dark? Harry. Well, natural. Yeah, natural. Oh, so well, Scotsmen are red, aren't they? Yeah, but sort of Vikings. So <laughs> they're blonde. Well, do you know something? Yeah, I've never seen you know, a redhead early, Viking. Earlier on, we were talking about uh, the, the, the January uh, New Year. Yeah. And there's a certain uh, s ceremony process, whatever you want to call it, where uh, on New Year, the first person to walk into your house, yeah, it has to be someone with black hair. Because the person in the house right, comes to the front door and, ch and opens the door to see if they're blonde or redhead. And it all comes from the Viking days. So if they had black hair, they wouldn't be allowed they in. No, the, there's a black hair. They brought a bottle of whiskey and a bit of coal, yeah, which represents. I know the coal thing. Yeah, the coal to keep the house house warm. Oh, right. and whiskey is as, as a warm yeah? yeah? and that was yeah. called first footing. Yeah, I don't think it's really done anymore. But when saying you're a redhead, so if Prince Harry comes to my door, you say, "Oh no!" You go slam on his face. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> being a red here. <laughs> well, anyway, so Ed's here. Bless his little cotton socks. Uh, he's uh, here. Uh, what day? Whatever I said, I can't see that. Twenty uh, eighth of April and you can get your tickets at Thai Ticket Major. And another one here I've just thrown in, it's on the 1st and 2nd of February at the Thai Cultural Centre, Jesus Christ, Superstar. Okay, okay. You know that one, right? You just sang these words, I wasn't even to tune to it, but uh, no, okay. no, 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 but it's Jesus Christ, you know that, right? Yeah, that was, that was, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yes, it's been around for, what, 70s it came out? As long as hair's been around. Right, okay. Not red hair or white hair, no, I mean hair, the musical. Right. Right? Okay, all right. Okay. God, didn't that rock the world when hair yeah. came out? I can't remember. But they're all nude, that. right, on there. It was one of the first, there were nude, that, uh, so nobody pieces. actually went to see the show. <laughs> the show. Well, once you couldn't see many bits because it was they're all covered in hair. Anyway, tickets are eight hundred baht to three thousand baht to go and see Jesus Christ Superstar. If that's your thing, right? What have we got? Restaurants. Now, this is from BK Magazine. Saucy. I, I only picked it because of the name of the restaurant. Saucy Chicken and Beer Bomb Restaurant. And what okay. it does is it actually has chicken drenched in six saucy flavors. Now, I love. That sort of thing. You've got your chili paste garlic shrimp oil, which is the original. You've got soy sauce, palm sugar, African teriyaki, which is wild honey and aged ginger. Isan jiao, which if you have uh, in the street, you have chicken and nanjing jiao, right. which is that beautiful uh, sauce. It's nampla fish sauce in there inside. It's beautiful. Anyway, they call that, what do they call that? The da 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 That's anyway, whatever. And you've got Korean chili paste or barbecue hot tomato paste sauce. Anyway, it looks really nice. They've got a terrace. They do... Um, it's where like is a, it? Uh, where is it? It's on Saturn Soy 8. Right. Okay. And you can catch up with them on uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Saucy Bangkok. What they do is vodka slushes and happy hour beers by two, get one free. All right. Down on with your on, chicken, yeah? Yeah, with, well, you don't, probably, you don't have to have the chicken. You probably can go there. Mind you, vodka slushes. They don't take, you know, if you have a shot of vodka or so, you know you're drinking alcohol with a slushy, I imagine, apart from the brain freeze that you might get, mm. they must go down lovely. And then, okay. you know, you've never had one. <laughs> I have in the past, at some, some, some point, I can't really of remember. Course. And their, their, their theme is like beachy, turquoisey, palm fringe terrace. Okay. Uh, with wicker. It looks quite nice. And you were at a place the other day. Yeah, just before, before we, we brought in the bells, yep. uh, we went to No Idea Gastropub on Sukhum Soy 22 and we had a meal and it was fantastic. Uh, I, I, I recommend it to all my friends. Uh, run by Dave, mm -hmm. Dave Hallam. And what, his, where does he come from? What nationality? New Zealand. It is, so yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a New Zealand style sort of gastropub. But the food is excellent. 
Uh, Good price, though, because my son mentioned it the other day. He said, yeah, the price well, some, some people have They're said, not paying us for this, by the way. This is just what we like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some people have said, oh, it's quite expensive. But, you know, if, if you want to go to get quality food, you're going you're gonna to pay for it. But it, actually, I would actually call it cheap. Yeah. Um, so I mean, if you went to Antara or or oh, somewhere, well, like, you're going to pay. Yeah. But, uh, but but it's, it, I, I think it's, uh, it's it's certainly value for money. We've got a fantastic uh, uh, range of wines. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and we have we got. Are you a wine drinker? Not really. Uh, you appreciate but my girlfriend a good is, and uh, she mm. she had she was recommended a wine. She she turned around and said, "Well, what was that?" I, said, I don't know. I wasn't too expensive. I mean, no. I mean, a, a good bottle, a nice bottle of wine for me. If you go to say like the Fat Cow or other restaurants, nine hundred to a thousand baht, I think is a reasonable price if the wine is okay. Yeah, People might say, "Oh, that's too cheap, Andy. You can't get a good bottle okay, of wine well, for it, that." It all comes down to what, what, which wine it is. Yeah. yeah and yeah. of course, you've got, if you've got a range, you, you, you can you can speak to one of the staff. They're very knowledgeable, and they can recommend what uh, against what what you're eating mm. to complement the food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Oh, anyway, oh, uh, and that's, that's where we went, and we we thoroughly enjoyed the, the evening. All right. So there we are. I well, you, when are you going to take me for my birthday? So good, uh, is it, well, I better take it quick because you've had quite a few birthdays already. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't know how many more I got, right? Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I tell you what, we forgot to do New Year's resolutions. Uh, did you make any? Uh, no, I didn't, uh, and the reason because is because I keep, cause I keep, I keep making them and, and, and not always, fulfilling them. Yeah, but one thing yeah. I am going to do is uh, lose more weight, as I think anyone, uh, anyone out of our age group keep, keeps saying, middle east, mm. middle east spread. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I will lose weight, and I've already lost uh, three kilos. Good lad. So uh, how are you doing that? Just basically more exercise activity, uh, mm. just doing more things instead of getting in a taxi, walking. Uh, instead of going up the escalator, going up the stairs. Yeah, the sudden, it's the oh, simple yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a, a Jimmy kind of person, if pardon the pun being Scottish. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, just basically being being more active and also watching watching what I'm eating. I'm one of these people. If you put the food in front of me, I'll eat it. If you give me stodge, I'll eat it. So give you, me healthy food, I'll eat it. But just don't tell me it's healthy. I thought you were on a seafood diet. When you see food, you eat oh. it. <laughs> That's an old one, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, this is a, a good thing I saw on Twitter from Siddharth Singh at Siddharth 3. He suggests that this is a startup idea, a gym named resolution that runs for the first month of the year. Collect all the subscription fees, then convert it into a bar named Regret. I think that makes to total sense, total sense. And one other one is uh, my New Year's resolution. This comes from Petra Hitchens at Flying Kepper. Flying Kipper, I thought that was. Uh, my New Year's resolution is simply to remember to write 2019 instead of 2018. So, there we go. Anyway, good luck on your New Year's resolutions. Uh, we've got an interview with Paul Jackson, who's more or less done everything a man could do here in Thailand. That's coming up next. Keep it here on Bangkok Chit Chat. <laughs> Hi, you're watching Bangkok Chit Chat with Andrew and Andy, and our guest today, well, let me just go through his resume. Uh, he's a club DJ, radi was, uh, radio presenter, radio music programmer, record store owner, BMG Records managing director, mobile disco entertainment guy, uh, club manager, club owner, I got do, 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 internet franchise owner, mainly with Anglo Info, and a lot more. Welcome, Paul Jackson. You left out a bit of there. What have I left out? No, fish this is for things like later on. Chip shop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Paul Jackson, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Um, when did you come to Thailand? How long? How long have you been? October here? 1982. So I reckon that's about 36 years. 36, 37 years. Yeah, yeah 36, not counting 2019. So 36 years. All right. A bit so of a shocker. <laughs> the first question, really, how's Thailand changed? And more importantly, maybe, how have you changed over that I've time? I've got old. Uh, yeah. uh, Thailand's changed. Oh, yeah. Same old, same old. The roads are better. It's yeah. still congested. Yeah. The public transport is much better. You know, the shopping malls are better. In 82, there was not a lot around. No. Roads that you take for granted now, like Rajalipisek or Rama 9, you 
back in the day when we used to get our work permit from Brahma 9 area, yeah. it was basically going through a swamp. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Is, was, these didn't exist. So all these highways and expressways, no, tollways, really. and not virtually there. nothing. That was yeah. my wife dropping stuff. Yeah, I hope the right phone's right. okay, Kung Wadi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's changed a lot, yeah. basically. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's a modern industrial city now, if that's the right word. Well, you're missing out. City. Something also is communication has progressed. I mean, yeah. when we, we first came here, no computers. Well, well, the only one airport, Don Juan, which used to take you three hours to get to. True, true yeah. which was really handy because I lived next door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It took me five minutes to get to. And, you know, phoning back to back home to the UK, yeah. you know, it was okay off from a landline, but it was mm. a whatever, two pounds a minute, 80 yeah. baht, whatever yeah. the current yeah. currency was back then. It cost you a fortune uh, to get a, a landline, it's something like that, that oh, too, a huge yeah. amount. Yeah. Well, when I, when I first moved to my house, and you'll remember this, for one year, or more, I think it was more 18 months, I didn't have a phone. There yeah. was no lines and no mobile. No, I remember. I that. wonder how I. Wouldn't that have been Wasn't lovely? it great? No one bothered what me. A perfect it was, world. It was my world. excuse for not calling him, is, yeah. but it worked. You know, now I don't have any, unfortunately. But uh, no, it's true. Uh, mobiles and things like that came along, and we all had our first Motorola here. Yes, um, the brick. Oh, the, the brick and everything yes. else. And yeah. everything. Well, that was fun, though. Got an arm and an egg and the back. 67,000 bar was cut. I got it from PT Electronics at Lad Prow Plaza at the Central. There. You consider 67,000 bar now would be, what, yeah. 140 or something yeah. by today's oh, money? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it was great when you go stroll along to the pub and you just put your phone. Poser, you used to put your phone down. Trouble is, everyone know. was doing it, so there'd be four tables with them all there. Thing is, you're phoning each other because you're the only ones with the phone. Basically, no, I never got in quite into that. The pagers, you got the pagers as well. Oh, yeah. we had those. And then yeah. using that to phone people back, you know, voiceover jobs were always paid, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite wild, yeah. that. You know, mm. Where's it all gone? I mean, you think no email, you know, now you just get online. 30 years, so that's all. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, it's no. not a long time. When you time consider, when you consider the, 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 the smartphones of today and all of those, you know, non existent things back then, it was like, my goodness, how did we get along? Mm. But was it as. Was it better than now, or is no, now better? No, I mean, it's hard. That's a hard question. Te- not telexes. That's a little bit before my time here, but yeah. faxes. You know, we still cost sending a, a, a five-page fax back to the UK. That would have cost. Of course, you had the faxes, quid, didn't, didn't you? Yeah. Facsimile. Facsimile. Yeah. Oh, right. So when people you still ask me nowadays, can you send a fax? I say, oh, not uh, not really. To be honest. No, no. <laughs> you can see it. Yeah, I'd basically just say I'll, I'll scan something. I'll send it to you. Yeah, by by email. Yeah. And there's a bit, a bit of whirring going around in their heads as they're trying to figure out what you're saying. But I think it's also the, the change in Thailand on, on the legality. A fax is classed as a legal document, whereas an email uh, is not or was not. I'm not sure if it is now or not. It is if you're using like, a, like Adobe Sign, things like that. Yes, in, in digital UK, signature. That's a, that digital but signature is a legal document. I'm not sure that's here yet. Uh, it, is, it is here. I mean here, but whether it's considered legal if you had to go to oh, court right, yeah, with yeah, it, yeah, as yeah, it yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I read somewhere, and this is when faxes were the thing, that don't take them, they won't last forever, they fade or something. Okay, is that right? Take, you had to take a photocopy of them. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I've got a trendier fax machine that just used A4 normal paper later on, you know, like a Mark II fax machine. All <laughs> oh, right. Um, but you know, that's just the way the progression of fax machines went, yeah. as opposed to the, the, the thermal printing, yeah. as it were. But, yeah. oh, that's interesting. This, so you came here, how old were you when you came here? 22. Close to 21. Do the math. Yeah, yeah really. It's 21. I was 30. But I'm yeah, the yeah. oldest here. Of course. I know, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's evident. That's why yeah. it's my show. <laughs> <laughs> At least the Zimmer frame is parked over there I and mean, it's still <laughs> safe, don't we? You know. So you came here 22. <coughs> 22, yeah, with that kind of curly hair and stuff like that. Yeah. You had hair then? I had hair and it was permed. So it was quite interesting. And what was your, and what was your, what <laughs> were you doing? Back then, yeah. what, what were you doing, and where was it? That was uh, I was working for a, a London agency called Giuliano's slash Backers because they merged yeah. at some point. They were like an in- entertainment agency. Send DJs around the world. So yeah, well. like you worked for yeah. one, but a smaller one in Norway, right? Yeah. But, uh, well, we were international, but we weren't. Yeah, you had the bells and whistles. They flew you places. And yeah, the records. Yeah, I had to carry all my records yeah, around with yeah, me. Yeah. You got be- better pay. We which did. Is very we did. strange. We yeah. just had better hotels. Yeah, well, because we were better DJs. Yeah, it was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, where was it? Sorry. Around Norway initially, but when I arrived yeah. and, and a few other places in the world, and then I came to um, the Dusitani in Bangkok in Bubbles Disco, which mm. is the, where I think I was the th- maybe the th- second uh, Farang DJ to work there or something mm. like that. 
That was a three-month contract. Hotel Disco. Yeah, it was the place in Bangkok at the time. Yes. And I think there was, it was the only one. Frequented by royalty from time to time. From time to time, yeah, let's mm. not go that way. Mm. Um, mostly actors, actresses and rich Thai people. Drinks in 1982 were 500 baht in that club. So, and it was packed Monday to Sunday. Boof, you couldn't get in after 9.30. It was an absolute Well, you seem to mega, like these, mega spot. these sort of um, exotic high end mm -hmm. discos because you move from there to the Oriental Hotel. I mean, yeah. that was a step up. Yeah, but that was on almost, uh, oh, I think they extended my contract seven, eight, nine times until I, I ended up going. To the Oriental. Um, yeah, I was there for th nearly three years at the Dusitani. Yeah. And then, you know, this other mega club at the Oriental Hotel in the Plaza building mm -hmm. next door called Diana's was, you know, doing also great guns and they just basically paid me more and more and more to go there and work there. So I went there for a couple of years. I mean, may I put in, at this time, every hotel, in, even then, including out my way, Rama Gardens Hotel, had a disco yeah. oh, with right. a Falang, uh, yeah. an English, nine out of ten times English, Pretty DJs right. at them. At that one right. time, I think we counted when we had a get-together. Yeah. It was Sunday nights. Almost 20-odd, yeah. 20 25. Yeah, it was 20, 20, between 20 and 25 DJs, yeah. all yeah. working. Airport hotel yeah, even had there. a DJ. But what about the attenders? Was that aimed at the tourists or was it aimed at the local? Oh, no. for, or those, for those other hotels, anybody basically. By that time, you know, discos were trendy, so only the rich still went to diners and bubbles. But those yeah. were more accessible. Like your club is. Well, yeah, I mean, drink, right? there, there was a, sh there was, a, it was, it was uh, two drinks at two hundred bar. There we go. I used to um, go there because it was cheap. But, well, th there was a shift <laughs> in in DJs. Big pun. A shift. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wasn't sure he was having a go then. That dodgy sushi I had. I thought he said they were the shit DJs. Well, apart from that, but yeah. Well, there were some pretty bad ones. I must admit, the ones that were Mickey Mouse. No, what was his name? That was one guy. Mickey Mouse. I can't remember. There was all the dregs over here at one point. Sounds like a wrestler. Well, Mickey Mouse wasn't he the record label guy? Mickey Mouse. You're right. Yeah, from Rack Records. There we go. See, knows his because I'm looking through all the jobs you had. Nice ones, as it happens. Oh really? Yeah. You've all been connected with music. There was a shift in discos, like. He did the typical hotel disco. You could have been in Diana's or Bubbles, or you could have been in Dubai, you could have been in wherever, wherever, mm. wherever. Because they were there as, as entertainment for the guests that were staying, and then at weekends the locals would join in. Well, yeah, there weren't thing. many hotel, hotel guests that would go down, not many no. to my remembering. Oh, right. It's just too expensive. For How's it changed then? How's it changed from, from then to now? First of all, not disco. My, my, my daughter turned around to me and said, I said, do you go to disco? I said, dat. Well, that They're not called doesn't discos. Exist, no, quite, yeah. Yeah. Do you go to the club? Yeah, basically. Uh, the club? What club are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So it's you, all club. No, you chill out down the clubs and pick up on some how's, vibes. How's it changed? I mean, obviously the type of music has changed. Yeah, quite. Uh, but, but what I see when I go to, uh, well, I don't go to clubs as such, but uh, clubs is more sort of techno music, etc. But But also there's a, a revival of all the music from the 80s and 90s. Not, oh, yeah. Sadly, you're not going to hear that in Thailand ever, unfortunately, unless I'm doing it. Maybe. 80s, 90s? No, no one. Will. Oh, you, no, no, my son, really? my son will at our barbecues, but That's he's not the same. No, he's very good at getting the older ones. Even you'll hear, you'll, you'll hear yeah, stuff. Very, very rarely. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. No. there are, there's probably a thousand little clubs in Bangkok now. And none of them have got what I would call professional DJs, which is a sad thing to say. Yeah, I know. They're just bedroom DJs that learn how to put two records together that Mix. are basically house house music. Yeah. And they come and go ten a penny and their cheapest chips to hire. That's in our days, it's very was, rare to find it a, was vinyl, an entertaining yeah. DJ. It was yeah, 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 yeah. For, the, for the average, person, for me, a DJ, uh, and you'll be horrified with what I say. A DJ is somebody who puts on records and says a few words in between. Yeah, yeah well, that's what but they used to do. Right, uh, but yeah. so how is it different now? They don't see any words in between. No. They just, they just no. put on they a record. They yeah. Yeah. Uh, they'll put a record on. They press a button. Press a button. Yeah. They create a playlist basically. They'll yeah. mix the song in, in a professional manner because yeah. it still takes. But a, bit a lot of, skill, of the equipment. But there's no it. voice skills or any kind of interaction with the crowd. That's yeah. just done purely by the music. Um, right. They so wouldn't have. The, they wouldn't have the skill to pick up a mic, look at the crowd, and entertain them. They would not. They would not have that skill. And they don't even have right. to really. If I'm wrong, to tell me. But the music now is if you go into a club that's renowned for Deep House or something like that, they have much, it's easier for them to pick the right music for that place. Whereas mm. we would have, we used to have, you know, records marked floor filler, da 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 da. And my horrible nightmare was dreaming in the night 
I lose the floor. Well, that's every day. Which is a nightmare, of course. It's, a, it's an every or a range of senses. The floor, what do you mean? You look, people people just walk off. Playing a rubbish song. Oh, you yeah, see, and that's, a, that's yeah. flop sweat and everything. Yeah, but nowadays, the, the music, I think, is there's much more of it. And yeah. I think people, as long as it's deep house, they'll go along with it. To be fair, also, it's the same. But I'll be shot down in flames if there's any deep, good DJs this thing, but, you know. Um, well, my, my son's watching this, so uh, <coughs> he's, he, he's, he's very good at taking music out of the 90s, 80s, but the remixed that's, ones. Yeah, that's, remixed. that's your son, yeah. yeah. barbecue yeah. Oh, yeah, bar, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. You know, a bar in the, Bangkok. The no, as a job, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the crowd are not there. Well, okay, so that moves on nicely to the sort of radio was happening early days of radio, you were here for that. Um, you started in 107? 107 back in the day uh, was uh, jazz music in the daytime. Not uh, live? In Monday, no, it was taped initially. Yeah. We had to send these reel-to-reel -reel tapes to M -O MCOT, which were sent by motorcycle every four hours. Um, but we record an hour at a time, because that was the only technology that was available to us, right? And uh, it was in Siam Square, the studio, that's where yeah. we used to, blank. that's where I introduced you into it, you yeah, know, blank, blank International. Yeah. So it was jazz in the Monday to Friday and then rock on the weekend. So I, I didn't fancy the jazz, so I just did weekends, just like a four hour show for Saturday and Sunday. Introduced me into radio. But, mm. um, it was taped, so we've made a mistake. We stopped the tape and do it again. So you'd have messengers going off once the hour tapered. Well, no, they'd, they'd do like about of five hours at a time or something. And then wicked off messenger to the. It would probably be the same way as messengers send everything in time and still now, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that would go to MCOT in Rama 9, mm. and that would be put on and that would be it. And the next day it would be on air. Mm. Um, so that was up until, my goodness. Well, I, uh, um, I don't think they went live. The first live station was when we went on in, in uh, August. Was it August? Or no, August? December 82, uh, uh, 80, 86, 87. 86, 86, 87. 86, 87. It was 86. I think it was about yeah. November. Yeah, that was the first time yeah. radio went live in time. Yeah, let's move on to that. 95.5, yeah. which I, he got me on it. I've mm -hmm. never done it before. I used to have someone that used to for the first two or three shows would put the needle on the record for me. Put the needle, because my hands were shaking too much. Really? I couldn't do it. I was so nervous. Was that DTs or was it well, uh, just No, it wasn't to be DT, I wasn't <laughs> used to drink much those days. Anyway, <coughs> you used to have to hold the record, you see, because it was all vinyl. So it's it, probably it, me putting it on there for you to be fair. Oh, I thought I the only reason I couldn't you put do something on the needle was if, uh, if it had a scratch, you put a penny or a ten. Oh, I've put, on, put on that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. These were actually, that's, that, that's you said, the home the home turntables of yeah. the day, but they actually had, I can't remember the name because they're so obsolete now, but they were actually the same turntables that Capital Radio and Radio Not One used. Techniques. No, no, no. It wasn't you mean name. the one with the very... It uh, wasn't a name that we would ever see it in, oh, in the right. high street. They had the actual same equipment as Capital and Radio One, the actual dogs, bees, if you yeah. like, of turntables and these things. <laughs> Instant stuff. Yeah, drive, they were amazingly, drive. amazing okay. turntables. So they, you wouldn't have to put anything like that on. Yeah. I'm glad that his rule of TV is yeah. always turn yeah. your phone yeah. off which we, we two did which we two professionals did and do you know what's worse yeah, he's ahead. reading the message on yes I know. I know so those turntables yeah, yeah you wouldn't have to weigh the uh, thing down yeah they would be so 95.5 was the first live radio because I remember and the euphoria behind it with the DJs was great we could give traffic reports yeah. which is something you could never do <laughs> on never the radio like 30 years later they're still the same same roads are blocked and it's all nonsense what's, what's that long word that we could always have chong chong chatter what a knee barra rom barra rom and the chatter chony can we get help we didn't have it back in the day the road didn't exist but barra mani whatever and you the, the traffic report come in and you first thing you'd look at is that word yeah. on there you know or oh, Mr. Hour anyway but it was all nonsense because every road was yeah. congested but, but it, it was, was sponsored so it was, yeah, sponsored, it was done so, yeah. but even giving the weather out that didn't change much as well but yeah. it was nice to be live hot outside mm. when you've been recorded all your so life so it's actually changed now I mean now what I see is this, there's no there's no English radio not it's since that six they speak now. English because when they do speak English at times on you, times yeah you, they, you can hear the, the uh, it's Americanized accent yeah and, yeah uh, so but there's nothing in English there's no English which I think is quite sad because very sad the, for two reasons one is well ma the main reason is that for ties to practice their listening mm. of English yeah, yeah, that uh, came into it a lot, didn't it? We used to get those people that I like to listen, you know, yeah, improve my English. And, and this is Thailand now for Southeast Asia is classed as a lower English uh, language mm. uh, yeah. ability in Cambodia and Vietnam. Really? Mm. Mm. Yes. So it's it is. It is. It is. It's fallen back. Hey, no, this is not saying that. Oh, these fall are saying you should learn English. No, it's totally up to. We should learn Thai. 
We should be. Right. Oh no, it's not that. It's not. But it's mm-hmm. more uh, when you see that. It's, oh, it's a bit, a little bit disappointing. But but the, from the radio side, the exposure to that is not there. It's still in the movies, mm-hmm. obviously the theatre. Mm-hmm. True. But I always find that the listening. When you look at a picture, you can also lip read. You can, listening is you have mm-hmm. to have more focus on that. Maybe they've taken it off because m- people have more crashes if they have to focus on the English rather than on the driving. Um, I don't know. I don't think it would affect the seven yeah. deadly days at all. To be no, but I, mean, <laughs> I, I mean, after we started, the, after 95.5 was started and running, about, I don't know how long afterwards, there was 105. Two years. Yeah, smooth, uh, two years, smooth yeah. 105. So that's two English stations for a start. And then 107.3. And there was yeah. one more, wasn't there? Wasn't there one no, more? No, there was three. Basically. Well, so three, three stations dedicated. Yeah, ninety-five point five CHR commercial hit radio, uh, mm-hmm. Evergreens, and all that slow stuff on the smooth one hundred and five, and one hundred and seven was. Uh, well, they went through a few different formats. Yeah, they? And they went through an oldies, and then they went through a top forty, and now they're back mm-hmm. to top. Well, now they're back to top anything. Well, well I listen to one hundred and seven now. Well, it's the only it's the only one that listens to. Well, well there's one hundred and five point five. Yeah, which my wife listens to. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's uh, Time Market Station. Ninety five point five is still there. Is it's Time Music, but it's still up in the it's top Virgin three. Now. It's Virgin. Yeah. Virgin. Not anymore. Is Virgin here at all now? No. Because I mean, I've got so many questions. I think we're going to have to do a part two on this interview because I've got so many more things to ask Paul and this one is very interesting so let's stay with it for a moment. If you'd like to see the extended version of our chat with Paul Jackson then you'll find it on our YouTube channel which is called Chit Chat. Uh, we'd also like to hear your comments on the show and you can do that via Facebook Messenger or YouTube itself and please do us a massive favour and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chit Chat. A clickable link is at the end of the video and also like our Facebook page that's called Chit Chat Now. That's it for now, though, and we'll see you on our next show, which is on the 30th of January. See you then.